Come on along. So what you guys are about to see is me working yet again. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, no, I'm putting a video together. I'm going to on how to fix, replace, repair the blade on that 1010E uh, forwarder, John Deere. It's a 2011 with about 7,500 and they got the bottom ripped off. And so what I'm going to do is, I got the material and you'll see me ranting and blah, 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 blah. I don't know how it's all going to turn out. It may be super long. It, I, I don't know. Um, so bear with me. Watch it. Appreciate you guys watching. I'm trying to make stuff happen with regards to the, the welding and stuff. So um, to try to teach a little bit at the same time. So. Hopefully that all works for you guys. So yeah, just stay tuned and uh, watch. Um, go from there. Thanks. Thanks for watching and share and subscribe and all that other good jazz. Talk to you later. Watch. You guys all know what this is? Here I am again, prepping for the day. A torch tip, eh? These are torch tip cleaning tools. I know the last time I used it, it was kind of boogered up. In and out, a couple strokes, that's all you need. These are going about 30 bucks a piece now. No, I don't buy offshore brands. Clean them out. Clean them out, man. That's it. Time to torch. Nothing fancy. Do it. It'll last a lot longer.
and Derek Hitt. See what we got. What did that take? About five minutes. Oh yeah. That's what I was breathing in. Whee. Pine dust. So you see, I left this here because I got an eight inch piece and I think when I measured it out, she's gonna lay out perfect and I will just lay it over that one. Ooh, we'll see. See that? So as I stated before, now that I got it all cleaned up, I'm going to cut across the bottom of all these. So I'm going to go through this well, through that plate, and yeah, I'll have a little gap when I'm done, but I've got a 5 8 or a 3 quarter inch plate that's going on there. Not a big deal. But what I think is going to happen here, and I was going to come out and stay about an inch, inch and a quarter from that radius, and cut this off, but this one got so folded over I have to cut up and somehow match that flat surface otherwise my plate will never come up inside there so on both ends where it peeled open I have to get rid of that part of that radius that's what I'm going to do next, I'll set you up, I'm going to cut all these and even here these are clipped corner angles I'll be able to take the torch right in there just tip the head cut through and then pick up again and come across so should be pretty cool and you never know I may change what I'm doing as I go that's what I said got to adapt
You guys see that? I sweep a lot because I like my $160 Red Wing boots not to have all that crap embedded in the bottom of them. And then walk in the house and have iron stuff in the house. Always keep that clean and then, the, then you don't have like when you drag your cords and your torch stuff through that hot stuff. It's just get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Push it away. Don't drag your cords and stuff, you know, you get your hands, that yeah, melt cords and stuff. It's just logical, dude. Okay, I'm gonna cut. Cut some more.
Wait, me pig. <sighs> yeah. Excuse me. So now you can see. I wonder if you can see that. Still a little low right there. But I got a nice straight flat bottom. Maybe a little low right there. Now you'll see. I gotta just now is now is the sucky part. And you all gotta suck it up. Ooh, look at it. Looks like I got beat up. Chew tobacco, Folgers, done with it. Hey, um, yeah, I'm gonna get the grinders out now. I'll shut the camera off. You don't need to see me grinding. That's just that's just bulwark. I should have brought you up here. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on my camera skills and getting uh maybe a magnet mount so I can do something like that. But you saw that that torch just I just couldn't get a good cut until I got that last scale of rust out of there. Rust will just screw you with welding, with anything. You gotta with that needle scaler. Hey, I'll show you that. You guys can go to Harbor Freight and get one of these. I bought the Sioux one, that's probably about a three hundred dollar tool, but I've been welding forever and that'll last me till I'm dead. Um if I ever die, I'm gonna just be a ghost. So that's it. I'm gonna grind and get everything cleaned up for you and then I'll come back, okay? Not that I don't want you around anymore, but I think I had enough of you for a little while. So, um, what else can I tell you? It's gonna be 65 degrees. I don't know how long I'm gonna last. I might grind this and take the rest of the day off and do this tomorrow when it's raining outside. Well, Grinding is just about done. Well, it's close enough. I got to start doing the fit up. That's my favorite part. I got everything polished up. Only took me three quarters of an hour. Very nice. And I even, I, I hate, it's just me being anal now. Me. But it wouldn't hurt you too. These blades are always chowdered here from hooking on iron and guys pushing trucks. It's a good place to get cut. So while I'm grinding right here, I just go for it and I deburr that. Round them over. Because I'm working here. You haven't missed one right there. Anyways, so now I gotta do the fit up. Everything is cleaned up, ready to go. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Because that's what I do. So, first I'm going to take a break, it's lunchtime, and uh, you'll see how I'm going to set this up. I got a, the plate, I went and measured it, I got to cut off about a half inch, it's got to fit up just inside this one, and inside this one. And then you have to do this, you have to come over here, and you have to go, hmm, you have to sometimes just bring over your old 1960s vintage office chair and you just sit here drink a bottle of water and look at it and go hmm what's my next plan of attack and it'll come to you like I said my favorite part is the fabricating now so I'll eyeball it and I'll look and then I'll get that plate cut to the right inside dimension and it's three quarters I know that so on that corner it's actually going to protrude down 
And so I'll have a nice weld on the outside, I'll have a really strong weld on the inside. And what I'll probably do then is just cut myself a, a, a sliver to remake that corner the way it's supposed to be. And or I'll just single pass it with hardware, weld, 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 and just build it back out so it looks original. I'm not just a scab on blade type guy. It's going to look just like it should relatively close. But that's where all the, you need to strengthen that corner. So, um, hell, you need to strengthen everywhere. It's a blade. So I'll bring you back later. ever tell you guys I only use a plasma cutter for sheet metal perfect reason to have a torch right there smoke wrench okay I gotta grind now prep -y. gotta prep things come on camera whamera if you were a weevil you wouldn't wobble and you wouldn't you would wobble and you wouldn't fall down because weevils wobble and they don't fall down so yeah this is what I mean about being flexible. I gotta rip this down to seven. Good six and seven eighths. And I bought eight inch for a reason. So when I put that three eighths here, seven comes up to here, there's still a radius from it being bent up. It'll be a lot slighter. And it'll be right there and there's a weld on the back side from the other side right there so I gotta cut this trim it that much better to be safe than sorry right trim it got some gaps to fill yeah mm-hmm a little bit of miscalculation here because I didn't know I was gonna I did know but I forgot whatever not a big deal it's getting laid on that radius to keep it stronger. So actually the blade is going to be about a little bit thicker to the floor, a little bit. So I'll build these corners out, tie this in, and I had it on the floor. She fits, you can see the dust print. Fits perfect. She's straight as an arrow. For now, I got to be careful when I weld it, especially these. I got to get something, either a block alongside here so it doesn't, so that weld doesn't suck it all up. I think that's what I'll do is I'll probably take the drop from here, cut them, lay them alongside, make a fillet and a fillet, a fillet and a fillet, rather than try to fill that whole gap in. Be more effective, less warpage. So, torching time again. I sure am thankful I have Troy's toolbox laying around so I can set my camera up. Anyway, I'm going to make some cuts this way as I go. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Let's see what my body does. And no, I'm not going to cut the tips of the forks off. I got them all far enough. Okay.
grinding time again. Ah, what's another two hours of grinding and cutting? What do you all think? Mm, a little low in the middle now. Anyways, that's what I wanted. I'll get her adjusted up and I'll put a root pass in there in the bigger gaps with some hard wire. I don't have it tacked in, I just got it set in there right now. I'm gonna do a little adjusting right there. She'll be flush. Gonna grind all the scale off of here. Fill in the corners. Or weld them up. I'll probably just weld them up. Just run stringers and with the little dribble shit wire. Tie that in out here. Yeah, looks way better than it did though, doesn't it? I don't necessarily care for this, but that's what he wanted. What he wanted, that's what he gets. So, yeah, I'm gonna sit down now and have me a bottle of water. Yeah, right there is the only spot I got hanging up. That I can fill. It'll be a hundred percent penetration. Penetration. Did you hear that? Penetration. Yeah, she'll turn out very nice. Okay. I'm gonna get this in welding now. Ah. Uh -huh.
Okay, I'm going to finish that up. You know what I like the best about welding? You pull the trigger and people leave. Then you get to be in your own little world. Okay. I'll bring you back. Did you hear all that metal popping? It was talking to me. It was saying I ain't hot enough yet. I'm gonna finish up now and I'll talk to you later. So there I got her boys and girls. It ain't done. But it's tied right up tight, it's pretty much I got the cutting edge of the face plate on. What I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to come in and I'm going to... I ran a root pass. You could hear it cracking in the last bit if I include it. That cutting edge is harder than the rest and them tacks were... It was talking to me. It was telling me a story. So tomorrow I'm going to back grind all of these root passes that I put in so I got it consistent. Because um, it was a little little wider here, narrower there, so I just run the grinder on the edge and clean it all up, all the starts and stops, so then I can just pour the wire in there and make it one pass or two passes. Because it shows off a little bit more professionalism when you do that. In a little higher skill level. I'm not bullshitting you either. Um, and then on these corners down here, I, 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 I want to say, I'm going to, because this is the most abused part of the blade, technically, is these damn corners, because that's where they can see, and, uh, I'm going to build that out, probably not hook the end, but I'm going to build that out with weld, just one weld after, rather than put a piece in there and then it'll fall out. I'm just going to build it all out solid weld. So they got something, then I'll just grind it off, grind a nice radius on it. So they got something to wear off. And it'll be that thick. It'll be, oh, it'll be at least a half inch thick. So, this old guy is kind of whooped, you know, that was an eight hour day in actuality. No kidding. Um, the phone didn't ring once, it's, it's the weekend.
and people wonder why I do this. I tell you because nobody calls me, nobody stops me and says, hey Mike, how do you do, do this? And I don't have to deal with customers, it's great. That's why on my weekends I'm usually working on my own because I can really get a lot done. It's not good for me, I need to take breaks. I need to go on vacation one of these weeks, but um, for now until we get caught up, that's what I'm doing. I don't know if you guys noticed too during that whole thing, I was uh, sweeping up. Getting it under the machine, I, just so I can roll my chair around. Right now it's kind of a mess, but I'm gonna reconvene in the morning. Turn the polka show on. Excuse me, hey, I covered up a burp. Wrong with me. So that's it, I'll catch you on the next one, and then, I don't know, yeah, I'll edit this in. I'll edit this all up and try to make one long damn video for you. Okay. Um, that's all I got in my head right now. I'm tired. I got a headache. I think I had my welding helmet on too tight. So, okay.
my background noise. And what I'm doing is putting a, a burst bead on the plate itself because this shit is so hard. And the reason I did the back first was to help preheat this whole plate. It's softer back. I don't know how they do it. But anyways, I am in here too. I'm going to stack my welds. I got one weld. I got a groove. I backgrounded everything so it was nice and even. See it's nice and flush here too. But in this position I'm going to lay a bead right on here. Because this root wasn't the best so I decided to do a two pass rather than flood that whole thing and have it ugly. I'm going to do another pass right up on here. Same with this one. This is your first pass of a three pass weld. The original one I cut out where I ground back. So here there'll be a, a weld then I can lay one right in here and she'll blend really nicely. So that's what I'm up to and you see me. It's, I'm skipping around because blades have a tendency, even though it's all boxed in now, has a tendency to warp the cutting edge. My hands are going numb so I'm going to go back to work. Hope you don't mind. Well, there she is. All done. And if you recall, I told you I was going to fill these corners up. <clears throat> so I did. Filled them up with weld and just blended them around. They're going to be the first thing to get knocked off, but that's now about an inch thick with a weld, so rather than opening up after it uh, peels a few rocks it's just going to wear so I put a lot of weld in there rather than a piece so he can dig in the corners all he wants no hot she's still hot so that's it I'm going to throw some paint on it because that's what I do and uh, pretty much done you see what I was talking about with these I put the root pass in the other day, yesterday, and then same with this one, but it, I just filled the gap, and then I put one here, on this one, nice and flat, and another one over there, and I've got a nice flush weld, a few babies, but I like it. it, turned out well, and then I didn't have to do the overhead, because I got it all welded inside under this compartment. But I chose to, to keep dirt and stuff from cramming itself up in there. So that's why I did that overhead. And besides that, it's fun. You gotta like it. So, oh, one more thing when you're welding. I think I mentioned it earlier. I take the blending wheel and I knock all them sharp edges off of here. Where they hook stuff. I gotta do this top edge first yet. It's just something I always do. You're gonna grab onto that or they throw chains around it, whatever they do. 
but I like to take the burrs off. The last thing you want to do is fall on it or grab a hold of it and then cut your damn hand open. All right, so that's it. Rebuilding the 1010E blade. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys all learned something. Comments, put comments in the doogly doo, as Dave says, down in the bottom. And put comments down below and what you like, what you want to see, anything else. I'm going to try to do some more of this stuff if, as it comes about. I have no idea when it comes. So I chose to do this one. I volunteered. And that's that. See you, bye.